Hi, namaste, my name is Henry. I'm standing tonight in front of the Samadhi of Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharishi. I discovered Bhagavan in 1994. I was making research to help my wife who was dying from cancer. I was looking for the best way to do the transition. And I came upon the teaching of Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharishi. And the way he did help his mother do the transition by putting one hand on her heart and one hand on the top of her head for a period of 12 hours non-stop. Me and my family decided to use this technique to help my beloved wife and for seven days and seven nights we kept our hands on her heart and the top of her head praying to Sri Bhagavan Ramana Maharishi to help us in this transition period. When the moment came for her to pass away, I had my hand on her heart and one hand on the top of her head. And the shahashara, the top, chakra open and she left the body. It was a miraculous death and we were so grateful to Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharishi. Then I decided right there that I wanted to do something to serve Bhagavan. I went back to film school and decided that I would try to propagate, to spread the teaching of Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharishi with videos and film. In 2010, I came to the Sri Ramana Ashram and I met the president, Mr. Sundaram Ramanan. I explained what did happen to my wife and he believed me right away. And he gave me permission to film whatever I wanted in the Sri Ramana Ashram. I filmed many videos and again I came in 2012 and now those videos have millions of views on YouTube and other social platform. I was sad to learn that Mr. Sundaram passed away in 2020. And now the Sri Ramana Ashram as a new president, Mr. Anand Ramanan. And tonight it is a great honor to be able to interview Dr. Anand Ramanan. Dr. Ramanan, it is a pleasure and an honor to meet you tonight for this interview. My viewer, I have many questions for you. It's my pleasure and uh, on behalf of the ashram, appreciate what you're doing and taking the uh, the sights and the wisdom of Bhagavan all over the world, Henry. And I wish you all the best in this endeavor. And it was a moving uh, uh, talk, you know, to hear about your wife. And uh, I'm sure she's at eternal peace. First, Dr. Ramanan, I would like to tell my viewer your basic story. Henry, uh, we Advaitins are not, never born, nor do we die. However, 
This physical body was born in 1964 in Pondicherry. I had my early childhood uh, um, development in a town called Neveli, close by, and then did most of my schooling in a town, a city called Baroda, where I subsequently was able to get into a medical school and uh, was able to do my uh, medical degrees from Baroda. And in 1994, I migrated to United States, where I practiced uh, internal medicine till 2020. And uh, I was, then I came back to the ashram to take over this important responsibility when my dear father uh, became sick. And uh, my family moved for good in 2022. In 2012, I had the pleasure to interview your father. And the viewer can see that interview at the link that you will find under this video. I really liked your father. He was a very kind, very humble man. And of this interview, I remember a few things. First, him telling me with a lot of joy how he used to visit Bhagavan when he was a little boy. He did not know at the time that Bhagavan was one of the greatest sage of the 20th century. He told me for him, he was like a grandfather figure. He would go see Bhagavan and Bhagavan sometime had several squirrel on his head or a monkey on his lap. And he was always happy to see Bhagavan as a child. The second thing I remember about this interview, I guess nobody really asked him that question. I said, Mr. Sundaram, did you ever have any doubts about the divinity, the self-realization of Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharishi? And he looked at me, Without hesitation, he said, I never had a doubt. So this really touched my heart. And now more than 50,000 people have watched that interview on YouTube. And I would like you to tell me more about the life story of your father. Henry, uh, my father, Sundaram, as he is called, uh, his full name is V. Sundara Ramanan. He grew, grew up in the ashram and uh, was privileged to spend most of his early formative years in the ashram under Bhagawan's watchful eyes. He went on to become uh, an electrical engineer and uh, he worked in uh, two companies. One was uh, initially a power generating company and uh, then he went to West Germany to do his post-graduation in electrical engineering. And in fact, uh, he, I was born uh, while he was away. You know, my mother was pregnant while he had to uh, go to Germany for his post-graduation. And uh, he subsequently went uh, and uh, worked in the petroleum industry. And uh, once uh, after retirement, the next day, he came back to the ashram. What I remember of my father is uh, he is a very kind man, but a very strict person, and a man of personal discipline. He did not believe in being in bed uh, well, uh, at sunrise. And so I think 
part of the ashram training uh, went into him. So he would uh, wake up way before five o'clock and make sure the, the three of us, uh, the three children uh, and my mother were also up before five. And uh, he led us by personal example. He's not one to say, do this, do that, but it, my impression coming down would always see him in the shrine. Uh, we had a puja room, and uh, he was very fond of Sanskrit, and he would uh, daily chant the Ramana Gita, all chapters, uh, if possible, but most of the chapters of Kavyakanta Ganapati Muni uh, in the morning. And uh, then evenings, most days, he would make us chant Upadesa Sarum after we came back from play. In uh, the place where we uh, were raised, Baroda, uh, in uh, 80s, early 80s, we used to have Ramana Satsang, you know, uh, every month. So we used to have devotees come to our house, and they used to be chanting, reading, and then uh, there used to be a good dinner, and it used to be, on, on a Saturday or a Sunday, it used to be a lot of fun. Appa uh, was also uh, fond of Gandhi and uh, the simplicity that Mahatma Gandhi had, but his biggest influence was Bhagwan. And one thing I remember him saying was that Bhagwan's life, you know, you would say just looking at Bhagwan's life, uh, even without, it was, even if one didn't read a word of his teaching, just reading his life, his biography, his beautiful uh, equanimity, his love for animals, uh, uh, you know, the way he treated women equally, uh, better than even men, in, in, in the 1950s, 1910s, when, uh, you know, it was not even the norm. And then, you know, the set, doing a samadhi for his mother, when they were, it was unheard of. Uh, Appa used to say, and then how uh, frugal, how, how before the environmental sustainability uh, concept came, Bhagwan was a, a man who, who used very little uh, from nature, you know, he was a minimalist. Uh, he took very little, uh, he would use very little water, he would, uh, uh, but at the same time was uh, very, cl very clean. He was the most punctual man, the, the most humorous man. You know, the deepest philosophy was uh, conveyed to the devotees amidst laughter. So the, uh, I've heard this uh, confirmed from the older devotees too, who said that, no, Bhagavan was, uh, you know, was always a very jolly, humorous man, but, but at the same time he would go into silence and uh, expected the highest form of behavior from his devotees. But on the other hand, the, uh, the general atmosphere in the ashram was one of mirth and happiness. Even though they, the devotees didn't have too much to eat and many days in the initial power, part of the ashram went hungry with one meal, but they didn't even miss it. And then, and Bhagavan was also a very physically fit person too. He would make sure that uh, people went around the hill, went up the, uh, the holy hill Arunachala. So the ashram, uh, everybody, if you look at the pictures, uh, there are very few, uh, you know, uh, obese or out of uh, shape devotees, you know. So, uh, and then uh, uh, he also led by example where he, uh, he demonstrated the Nishkamya karma, you know, that 
uh, and Appa was very fond of saying that, you know, you should, uh, whenever we used to complain about not getting the grades that we wanted, he would say, why, you know, that's not in your hands. Your job is just to give your best with your books and uh, Bhagavan will take care of the rest. And that, those are the things kind of which uh, uh, entered us. And then you'd also, and in his uh, uh, obituary article in Mountain Part, I written how, as a young boy, uh, in the kitchen he was taught a lesson uh, by Bhagawan to not uh, be greedy and uh, try to take other people's uh, um, stuff by example. You know, the, one day he was there at five o'clock, four o'clock in the morning when Bhagawan used to grind the chutney and Bhagawan would give a little bit to everybody around him to taste. And Appa got his share and then he saw Bhagawan again stretch out his hands towards him and he uh, put out his hands and Bhagawan said, mm, because he was giving it the chutney to the person behind him. So Appa said, without, without Bhagawan, you know, saying anything, uh, Sundaram, you should not uh, aspire for other people's positions. He said, he just, he, he, from that day he never had the urge and he was never jealous of anybody. Uh, again, I think that's the Nyani's influence. Just that gaze, that, that t the deepest teaching, uh, transformative teaching can, uh, uh, a young boy could be reformed for life. And so, Appa would always say that, you know, that uh, you, you read Bhagawan's uh, life and then the teachings, of course, he said that will make sense. And he would make us, another thing he would always say is, uh, do the Parayanam. Later on in his years, he became a, the, the daily Tamil Parayana was his life. In the mornings, he would do the Sanskrit Parayana himself. And then the evening Parayana, he, would, uh, he was very fond of. And, and when we used to complain, Appa say, we can't understand the meaning, he would say, just keep repeating it. The meaning would soak into you by itself. That's what Bhagawan said. So uh, then he was also, uh, he inspired my mother to become uh, an equally devout devotee of Bhagawan by his example. Uh, Amma, uh, you know, was not exposed to Bhagawan's teachings growing up, but after marriage, uh, over the years, she has become so devout and su such a uh, wonderful devotee of Bhagawan and continues to inspire us and her grandchildren uh, to this day um, how one should live their life simply and a life of public service can be done with smile and treat every devotee uh, with equality and equanimity. And that's the ashram's uh, uh, example. How long was your father president of the Sri Ramana ashram? Appa returned back to the ashram in 1992, early part of 1992, to help uh, serve the ashram along with his two brothers to help my grandfather. My grandfather took sannyasa in uh, August of 1994. So Appa took over the, uh, as a president, being the uh, lineal male descendant, uh, he became the ashram president uh, as per Bhagawan's will. Uh, in uh, August of 1994. Uh, till he handed over the responsibility to me in June 2020. So I would say uh, a few, a couple of months short of uh, 26 years. So 25 years and 10 months. So my viewer really want to know how do you become president of the Sri Ramana Ashram? It is passed down from father to son, I understand, but could you give us more explanation? It's a very interesting question how I 
uh, became a, the ashram president. Uh, Henry, as you know, uh, the devotees made uh, uh, a will in consultation with Bhagawan in uh, 1938. In fact, in, in March of 19, March 6, 1938, and uh, Bhagawan uh, 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 put a, uh, a line at the bottom to uh, show his signature, in which it says, uh, uh, "Successive lineal male descendants would uh, be the uh, sole manager." You know, the word was used was manager not the president. And of course, uh, Niranjan Ananda Swami was the first uh, sole manager, uh, the Sarvadikari. And afterwards, it was my grandfather Venkatu, and then my father, and then uh, it was me. Uh, I knew uh, growing up that uh, my uh, being spending every summer in the ashram, that uh, I had this responsibility uh, to perform. And it's a joyous responsibility, but uh, it was uh, for, always made very clear uh, from growing up by my grandparents that, you know, I should be more responsible and represent Bhagawan well, because one day I have to come to serve here. And uh, Appa and Amma never really uh, would talk about it, but they, they set an example of service. And uh, so while in United States, uh, well, you know, uh, and that's why I chose to, uh, uh, you know, control my training and to not go on, as you know, in, you can go overboard in America, you can go on studying, but I, uh, controlled my training and uh, started my practice knowing well I didn't know how many years I had before I came back so uh, and uh, the it was basically Bhagwan's uh, uh, will you know uh, both in terms of uh, uh, a paper document the more important thing is his uh, what he wanted his sankalpa that uh, uh, that we uh, have come to uh, serve this wonderful institution, you know. And, and, my, and Appa always used to say that our path to moksha is through the service of the devotees. He would always say that when we say. And so that was uh, kind of uh, uh, ingrained in us. And then uh, in USA, we used to have the Ramana satsangs uh, uh, every second Saturday in the Washington area at our house, and then other fourth Saturday in some other devotees. So uh, kind of we never really uh, uh, went away. Uh, you know, we didn't go too far uh, from the from Bhagawan's teachings and uh, interactions with the Bhagawan devotees. In fact, uh, uh, we had uh, at least uh, uh, maybe 20 families who were uh, intimate in the Washington area, and uh, those are the only friends that we had. You know, somehow on the non-satsang uh, weekends, we would meet them, and uh, the conversation would somehow come to Bhagawan and uh, his teachings and uh, the ashram, and uh, how, I, you know, almost somebody would come here and they would come back and say, I mean, how amazing it, wa it is. And uh, so we really kind of, you know, even in the West, we grew up, uh, you know, uh, being in the same ashram uh, uh, atmosphere. And uh, so I am just uh, following uh, the, uh, what was, you know, written uh, in 1938. And I hope to, uh, you know, do uh, my best. You know, uh, and I, I don't have to look far for inspiration, Henry. Uh, Swami Niranjanananda was a, was an extremely, extremely uh, uh, great leader. He 
uh, man, he's, he put the foundation for this ashram and built all this beautiful, uh, the Maturbhuteshwara temple, when the ashram had no money and the Goshala. So from him I learned the, 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 uh, how to aim big and that, that, you know, how to be aspirational. From my grandfather Venkatu, you know, who uh, was a president during tough times in uh, in this state and thing. So how to be, how to stand up and fight for the right and not to bow down to any shallow enemies and always know that Bhagwan is going to surround you and protect you. From my father, uh, you know, who I, uh, you know, I learned that how to uh, handle prosperity. I would call him the first prosperity president of the ashram. Once he took over is when the ashram started having little financial leeway. But how he marshaled that to produce, improve the quality of the books, the quality of the food in the kitchen. You know, around everywhere there was a, a quantum jump in the quality of services provided to devotees. The guest rooms went through quality. The maximum number of kumbhabishegams were performed. And, and he believed in treating the employees well. He uh, was able to give them a good living wages to uh, the, the, the people who served the ashram. So those are all kind of, so my job is only to, to, to uh, I mean my challenges are going, are going to be there, but you know I've just settled into a, a, a rather easy job, you know, where I could uh, do a little bit of all three of them. But the biggest thing, you know, as, uh, as we were talking off the air, you know, you wondered why Bhagawan, you know, the, the most, the person who was most impersonal in, in terms of uh, uh, interactions with uh, humans, why did he choose the family? I guess, I think it's because he knew that we would have a tremendous skin in the game. You know, because for me, uh, there is my personal belongings don't matter. You know, I'm don't. I mean, as you know, we are blessed to have gone and had a good career in America. But that doesn't excite me. That doesn't define who I am. But a little bit of uh, improvement or a little bit of uh, service to have done for ashram and to see a, a new plant come out in the ashram, uh, to see the Arunachala being green, to see ashram to Thirunam, like get good rain and ashram not have water problems gives me more joy than anything else that my personal things could could ever do and I think that is again probably uh, I mean that could have happened to anybody whom Bhagawan chose but I think but then that's probably why the the, the kind of skin in the game that we have that you know uh, uh, that that's probably why Bhagawan uh, chose his uh, uh, family to. And again, you know, uh, let me clarify. This is not a, a position of power. You know, Appa taught me, my father taught me that the only president of Ramnashram ever will be is Bhagawan. I'm under no illusion that uh, all these people who come from uh, almost 140, 143 countries to the ashram are coming for anything that, uh, any uh, light and dance that we do, or for my personal charm. They're all here for Bhagwan. Bhagwan is the president, Bhagwan is, uh, is everything. Of course, Mathur Bhuteshwari and Kau Lakshmi, and the whole ashram uh, environment, and Arunachala. But they're, they're here for that. Our job is only to serve them, and, uh, and, uh, and I always uh, learned from my father that the ashram presidentship is not a uh, uh, it's not a bully pulpit it is it is a it is a, 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 a position of service we are here to be the first servant and and up I exemplified servant leadership you know how that how to be a, a first servant to devotees and I, I've been inspired by that and I will I plan on continuing that okay.